Hello, George Romanich here. Let's solve part two of the problem that I introduced in the previous video. You can see the text of the problem on your screens. So you will remember that in part A, we had to find angular velocity of this space station so that this astronaut has the same feeling of gravity that he would have on the planet Earth. Now, in part B, we, say, uh, we, we are given that he will throw a ball in the clockwise direction with some velocity Vb. And the question is, what needs to be this velocity Vb so that the ball ends up in an orbit around this space station? Well, the question is first, why would it end up in orbit? And this is where the concept of Coriolis force kicks in. Let's look at this ball at any point, let's say over here. What are the forces acting on the ball? Well, there is Coriolis force. Remember, this is rotating coordinate system, and the moment there is motion in respect to that non-inertial reference system, there is Coriolis force. So there is Coriolis force, and it is acting to the right of the motion because reference system is rotating in the counterclockwise direction. I explained all these things in my previous videos. Now at the same time, there is centrifugal force acting on the ball because space station is rotating and creates artificial gravity that we calculated uh, we calculate in the previous video the rate of uh, rotation, namely angular velocity, that is needed to create g. But clearly, there is resultant force, namely centripetal force, that is keeping this ball in the orbit. The ball doesn't hit the, doesn't hit the floor, it doesn't go towards the center, so it, at the end of the day, that means it constantly has to accelerate towards the center in order to keep this orbit. And this is the physics of an orbit, basically. So if we look into this uh, problem, that means that mass of the ball, acceleration of the ball, needs to be sum of all forces acting on the ball. Now, mass of the ball times acceleration of the ball, and this is basically centripetal force that is keeping the ball in the orbit is equal to the forces, and that would be centrifugal force acting on the ball due to the rotation of this space station, and that would be uh, mass of the ball negative mass of the ball omega of the space station cross omega of the space station cross radius of the space station. And minus Coriolis force. So Coriolis force is namely negative 2 mass of the ball omega of the space station cross velocity of the ball that we need to find. Now notice again mass of the ball, mass of the ball, and the mass of the ball cancels, as always in these types of problems. Now centripetal acceleration will be omega of the ball cross omega of the ball cross radius of the space station. 
I'm saying radius of the space station everywhere because we are assuming that the ball is just one meter away from the floor. So radius of the space station or this distance to the ball, I'll just assume it's the same. It's just one meter difference. It's not going to make that much uh, impact on our results is equal. So here we have negative omega space station cross omega space station cross radius of the space station and minus 2 omega of the space station cross velocity of the ball. Now this is equal negative omega of the ball squared times radius of the space station. Negative because this omega of the ball, notice that the ball is rotating in the clockwise direction. And therefore omega is negative, so the centripetal acceleration will be towards the center, which is my negative direction, because look, radius is positive out. So this ends up being negative. This will be positive omega of the space station squared uh, radius of the space station because centrifugal force acts radially out and that's positive direction and minus 2 omega of the space station times velocity of the ball. Again, I don't have to worry like in the part A, I don't have to worry about uh, sign of an angle associated with the cross product because all these vectors are perpendicular to each other and sine of 90 degrees is always 1 so I don't have to worry about that. Now what is omega of the ball? Well that would be velocity of the ball squared radius to the ball which is radius of the space station squared radius of the space station is equal omega s squared r s minus 2 omega s v b. Notice that this and square cancels. Let's continue here. And I will have that velocity of the ball squared over radius of the space station. So this will be negative, sorry. And then I will have negative, if I move everything to the left side, omega of the space station squared rs plus 2 omega svb. And that needs to be equal 0. Now I can multiply the whole equation with negative rs. Let me erase a little bit of the blackboard. But can you see this? Yes, you can see this. Still good. So notice if I multiply this with negative rs, I will get vb squared. I will move this to be the next term, negative 2 omega s r s v b plus omega s squared r s squared equals 0. And notice that this is a quadratic equation for v b. So v b will be 2 omega s R s plus minus square root of this squared, so 2 omega s squared r s squared minus 2 times this, 2 omega s squared r s squared divided by 2. 
And notice that this is zero. So as the final result, I get that velocity of the ball needs to be two and two cancels omega s times r s. Now you can see that uh, if you take radius of the ball, you would have here uh, instead of 100 because radius of the sp radius of the space station is uh, 100 meters. You would end up here with 99 meters, so not a big difference. And I think if you plug in numbers over here, you will get approximately 31 meters per second. So, if this astronaut throws this ball with that velocity over there in the clockwise direction, the ball will end up in orbit because the Coriolis force will be strong enough to create centripetal acceleration to keep this ball in the orbit and eventually the ball will hit this guy into the head. Well, not in the, into the head because this is just one meter uh, from the floor, somewhere in the belly or rather in the back. So the ball will go forever. Of course, it will not go forever in reality because there is resistance of air, but if we neglect that, it will just go forever. Now, what is happening? How do we explain this situation? If we are not in the space station, we are, we are some gods levitating outside of the space station, then we are in an inertial reference frame, so there shouldn't be any Coriolis force. So how do we explain this? Ah, we explain that in the following way. This person leaves the ball as it is and he and the space station are rotating. So the ball stays where it is, but in the next moment in time, uh, this person is over here. In the next moment in time, he is over here and so on, he is rotating and eventually he comes around to hit the ball that he left over here. For him, because he is rotating, he is in an inertial reference frame, he throws the ball, it goes around due to apparent force that we call Coriolis force and the ball establishes an orbit. As a bonus, I have very nice visualization for you regarding this phenomena. Enjoy. Hello again. Let's examine this problem that we just solved on the blackboard using a computer code. Now you can see on your screens a code that I have installed on my laptop. It's called O'Neill's Cylinder Lab 1.00. You can see it in the top left of your screens. And I put a link to this code in the description so you can download it and use it on your own. This user-friendly program has two windows, left one and the right one. Left window represents this problem from a perspective of a inertial reference frame for an outside observer, outside of the space station, and the right window represents non-inertial reference frame and the observer inside of the space station. So the astronaut is indicated as a little person and the ball is indicated with these red dots. Now the initial setup of the problem can be specified here. We have cylinder radius of this space station, currently it's 9 meters, cylinder rotation period of 6 seconds, initial velocity of the ball in meters per second, as well as the initial angle of the ball. So if we use these default values and we begin our simulation, notice that trajectory for an inertial observer from outside of the space station is the straight line and that needs to happen because for an inertial observer there are no apparent forces. So the ball just has a straight line trajectory and the rotational velocity of this space station is, and the astronaut is such that he rotated just at the right pace to catch the ball that he threw. 
Now, from a non-inertial reference frame, we can see that this ball had a trajectory that looks like a drop, <clears throat> a spherical trajectory, namely, and that is due to apparent forces, namely centrifugal and Coriolis force. Now, I would like to change the parameters of this problem to correspond to what we had in our problem on the blackboard, so the radius of this space station was 100 meters. Cylinder rotation period, if we calculate that from our angular velocity, we should get 20.1, I believe, seconds. And ball initial velocity was, we calculated, 31 meters per second. And the angle is negative 90 degrees. So now, if we start this simulation, Notice that the ball is traveling around the space station in an orbit, just as we wanted, but for a non -inertial, for inertial reference frame, this ball is stationary and the space station is rotating. So let's see now. Boom! It says catch. It says catch. That means that the ball established uh, an orbit went all the way around the space station and hit this astronaut in the back. As I said, interestingly, for an inertial observer from outside of the space station, the ball was actually standing still, and the astronaut and the space station are the ones that rotated and kind of caught up with the ball that was standing still in respect to the space station. So you can see in this example how the same motion can be perceived completely differently depending on the reference frame. On the right, you have non-inertial reference frame. On the left, you have inertial reference frame. I suggest you download this beautiful code and play with these problems on your own. Until next video, goodbye.